good evening and warm welcome all of you on behalf of women engineers forum iesl i would like to welcome all of you president elect iesl professor ranjit desa nayak vice president and council members and especially our resource person dr achilla panandu and some of my batchmates who to be there are big members they thank you very much welcome all of you and advisory committee members and its co members and all the participant engineers for this event uh, through online also our today topic is successful mentoring today our resource person dr achela fanandu uh, i know her very well and she is one of my best mate and uh, dr achela fanandu is affiliated with the school of engineering and built environment of trip university in brisbane australia as an adjunct senior lecturer she gained her undergraduate and post graduate education from the university of peradan kyoto university in japan and the university of hong kong she has worked in both engineering industry and academia her industrial experience in, in sri lanka hong kong and new zealand she carried out research and thought in various capacities and at university of peradeniya university of hong kong unitech institute of technology in new zealand university of jaffna rift university and queensland university of technology since 2015 she is based in auckland and engaged in academia professional and voluntary work in new zealand and sri lanka although her main area of publish research was on application of artificial network network generative algorithm and any expression programming in hydraulic modeling she has also published research on engineering education and women in engineering today she will illustrate the value of mentoring in the context of the engineering profession and how a successful mentoring program can produce win 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 outcome for the mentor mentee and the engineering industry now we will share the valuable experience about what mentoring and how to enhance the engineering practice by producing well rounded engineer thank you very much for being with us in this evening now i cordially invite dr achela fanan to share your valuable experience with us thank you Uh, thank you shreya ji for that uh, generous introduction uh, welcome everyone um, i know that there are people uh, listening to this presentation from overseas as well as via zoom uh, welcome all of you i hope you all can see me uh, the topic today is on uh, effective mentoring uh, and that shreya uh, ji uh, introduced i'm attached to the prithvi uh, university at san bedang senior lecturer and i'm going to present to you uh, the value of effective mentoring and also uh, give some examples of uh, uh, two cases of uh, uh, mentees who are going to share with you their experience okay let me not enough okay let me get close to you okay right i'll speak a little bit louder perhaps yeah okay now um this is uh, what i what you are going to be able to do at the end of so the those letters up there they might sound like greek to you but it means at the end of this session you will be able to right so better stand for that so at the end of this session you will be able to but describe what mentoring is and what it is not and review key benefits of becoming a mentee or a mentor 
and mm -hmm. identify the advantages of a mentoring program uh, and also recognize the benefits of producing well-rounded engineers for the industry as well as for the organization. And then recognize the essential features of a successful mentoring program. Now, the sample I'm going to take here is the Mentor Me program, which is conducted by the uh, Engineering New Zealand. And uh, the successfulness of it is quite um, interesting and good. So I'm going to share two uh, examples from there and identify and prepare essential documentation, how you can uh, produce the essential documentation for an effective uh, mentoring program. Now, if you are interested in, am I too? Can you hear, guys? Yeah, all right. So um, I'm going to uh, proceed with the presentation now. I hope all of you can hear me. So this presentation, I will cover uh, five main topics, what mentoring is and what it is not. And secondly, benefits for the mentee, mentor, and the organization. And I will uh, tell you a little bit about the successful mentoring program, Mentor Me, from uh, uh, New Zealand. And uh, you will be able to see the expectations from the mentee and the mentor, uh, and also the essential documentation for implementing a successful mentoring program. So let's now get on to see what mentoring is and what it is not. Right, now the word mentor dates back to the uh, Egypt, Egyptian history. You may have heard about the document or the uh, poem or the set of books called Odyssey. In, the, in that series of books, uh, in the Odyssey, as Odysseus uh, leaves for the Trojan War and he leaves his Son, entrusting his son to a person called Mentor. Mentor was Odysseus' colleague, and an aged gentleman who was very wise. So he entrusts his son to him and asks him to look after him until he comes back from the war, Trojan War. So the, the, his name was Mentor. So today it, it has come to mean the mentor is the person who is the more experienced one, and mentee is the one who is, has less experience. Uh, so the one, the mentor, is the person who imparts wisdom and shares the knowledge with a less experienced colleague, and mentee is the one who receives that guidance from the mentor. Now, uh, effective mentoring, we tend to think that it benefits only the mentee, but that's not the case. Everyone benefits from an effective mentoring program. Choosing a mentor is probably one of the most significant and uh, life-changing experience or a good decision that a young engineer makes at the beginning of his career. Now, some of the professionals, very successful professionals, attribute their uh, success to have been um, mentored by someone who has taken interest in their progress and helped them and listened to them and assisted them in their way to their progress. So a very, um, very common or very popular, a well-known mentor-mentee uh, relationship is this between, you know who? Mark Zuckerberg again? Yeah. Sorry? Yes, okay. So let's see what mentoring is. In a nutshell, it is a formally structured one-on-one -on -one relationship between a more knowledgeable, experienced individual who is the mentor and a less experienced one, the mentee. In a non-reporting manner, so there's no reporting between the two people, and that is to enhance professional practice and personal knowledge of the mentee. So this is, in a nutshell, what mentoring is all about. Now, why do we have a mentoring program? Because of all the benefits it brings to three parties. The first party is the mentee. For the mentee, it offers a very easy and better and focused path uh, for career progression and become more proficient in the job at, at, a, at a pace that he or she wouldn't be able to achieve by working by her, him or herself. Secondly, for the mentor, it needs to be to give back, to share wisdom, and benefit from reverse mentoring. I hope you have heard reverse mentoring. Reverse mentoring is to learn something from your mentee. So the mentee learns from the mentor. Mentor learns from the mentee thing, right? So I'm, I'm actually quite um, 
aware of this because I have learned a few things from, from my mentee. Thirdly, the industry or the organization improves the quality and professionalism of the workforce. So all these three are the reasons why we should have a mentoring program for your company or your organization or the establishment that you are working for. Now, in a effective mentoring program, what the mentor does is he, share, he or she shares the professional knowledge, the personal skills, experiences, institutional knowledge, and the network with the mentee. So the mentee learns from all this. Now, we have to remember one thing. In the learning process, you may have heard this. Tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. Oh, I can't close this, can I? I want you to see this. Tell me, I will forget. Show me and I may remember. And involve me and I will learn. That's what is covered with that little bar down there. So that's what it says. So involve me and I will learn. So here, the involvement of the mentee is the key to the transformation of that young engineer into a, a complete or a fuller uh, engineer. So one thing that we had to remember is it's the mentee who is at the, the steering wheel or the helm of the ship. He, he or she has to take charge of the whole process. Then let's see what mentoring is not. Mentoring is certainly not being there as the superman or the superwoman to rescue the mentee. Right? So that's not what the purpose is. The, pur the purpose of mentoring is to encourage and to enable or to empower the mentee to face challenging situations in the future. So it is very possible for a mentor to uh, sort of get drawn into that role of rescuing. Right? So even I sometimes feel, oh, why don't I step in and you know, solve this problem for her or for, her, for him? But that's something, that's a temptation that you as the mentor has to uh, fight. Okay. Now, just a lot of engineers are reluctant to take the mentor role because they think that they have to know everything to be able to play a role as a mentor. But that's not the case. You don't certainly not have to know uh, everything. And it's very possible that the mentor might be a senior professional or a, a colleague, senior colleague from a different area altogether. And in that case, you will not have much technical uh, commonality, right? So certainly you don't have to know everything. So if, if you think that you, you, if you wait until you know everything, you will never be your mentor, right? So you don't have to be afraid of that. Just step up and do your bit if you can. So I'll go to the next uh, set of, uh, next topic, next sub subtopic to be Uh, so benefits for the mentee, mentor, and the organization. So benefits for the mentee. First of all, the, big, the mentee begins to understand his or her own strengths and weaknesses from the constructive, honest feedback from the mentor. So mentor doesn't mince his words. He, he or she will tell the mentee honestly what the, the strengths and weaknesses of the mentee are. So the mentee has to be, you know, um, I'll tell you about the qualities of the mentees later on. So this is the first step. The moment you understand the strengths and weaknesses, this is the first step in order to step into develop new skills, confidence, and identify areas of professional growth. So you can identify in what areas that you need growth in. <laughs> so the mentor will help you mm. to Pardon in the me. right direction. Now, mentor will also show you opportunities to develop and demonstrate your abilities. You may have, as a mentee, you might have, as a young engineer, you might have skills that, that are hidden. So he will give you opportunities to develop and develop those uh, capabilities, and that will make you shine in the industry. And that will give you more, uh, that will give the mentee more opportunities to uh, shine and also uh, be recognized for the work that he or she does. So have access to a sounding board and share experience. Now, this is a very important one. Uh, having a sounding board is to have someone either confirm your values and ideas or concepts or uh, tell you, frankly, no, this is something that you had reconsidered. So that sounding board, acting as a sounding board is a very good opportunity for the mentee 
that uh, he or she can extract from the mentor. And shared experience, this is also very vital, particularly for female engineers that I have dealt with. The, the, the experience might be quite personal, but they may be affecting the work directly or indirectly. So in such situations, it's very important and very valuable that you have somebody to talk to and then get um, the, uh, the experience um, exposed. And also, and also you have to remember that the, because the mentor the relationship is very confidential, anything that you tell the mentor is safeguarded. So you have to be very um, comfortable in opening up to your mentor. The last one, even I can't. All right, I'm going to take this out. This bar, can I hide this black bar? No? Because I can't see that. Anyway, so this is um, the last one is to actually about the mentor giving, um, uh, introducing the mentee to the networks that he already has established. So he can introduce you to his uh, network of people, which he may not be able to access. If he if he's not doing it by himself, so all the training, the motivation, advice, direction, support, coaching, and goals towards the goal will help the mentee to establish more connections and also um, rise up the career ladder faster. And also, um, the mentee learns how to avoid and deal with pitfalls, perceived and real roadblocks. Now, this is quite important because the mentor may, in his or her own career, may have uh, how encountered those roadblocks. Some are actually not even real. Some are just perceived. For example, the fear to um, fear fear of facing an fear, fear of facing an interview, fear of doing the charter, for example. Those are not real. They are just perceived. You you think it is difficult. So the mentor can actually explain the the roadblock and also uh -huh. tell the mentee how he or she dealt with them. So that honesty and also that system helps the mentee to uh, how to avoid the and and deal with the pitfalls that are so, the, uh, then the care. The next one is it helps to enhance the career opportunities and have a strategic career plan. So opportunities are uh, increased, and he will help you. The mentor will help the mentee to have a strategic career plan, which will allow you to move faster in the career ladder. Mentee will also gain or increase the uh, extent knowledge of organizational culture, structure, and process. Now, this is something that you, as a new engineer or a young engineer, do not have uh, much knowledge of when you enter a company. You don't have how the, you don't know how the organization works. So, but the senior engineer, he knows how the organizational culture and how the structure and the process works. So you have a fast track to the to knowing those um, culture, structure, and process related information. So having your mentor will uh, help you to understand all this quickly. Uh, mentee will also develop new ways of thinking and problem solving. Usually, the mentors have had a lot of experience, so they have shorter ways, quicker way of doing something, a faster way of doing something, and saving time and so on. So they will show you and you can, uh, uh, the mentee will develop new ways of thinking and problem solving with the help of the uh, mentor. Finally, this is actually the network thing that I told you before. Uh, so what I'm going to talk to you next is, first I told you these are the um, benefits for the mentee. Now I'm going to talk to you about the benefits for the mentor. Now for the mentor, the opportunity he, he gets an opportunity to give back to the profession. So you always take from the profession. So this is the time that you can give back to the profession. And by guiding the young engineer in the path and seeing he or she flourishing, it gives you a sense of fulfillment. It's a real great feeling, I'll tell you. Right? And also the mentor will develop leadership skills because otherwise if you if the lead the, if the mentor was just sitting at the desk and doing just engineering work, it doesn't give the mentor much opportunity to develop leadership skills. So here, the mentor will develop leadership skills and 
thereby increase the confidence and also will be motivated to do bigger things. And the engagement with junior engineers, I'll tell you, is a very fun thing. It's very stimulating to in, mix up with the mix with the uh, younger engineers and uh, learn things from them and also uh, do things together. It's very interesting. And having to mentor a mentee, uh, the mentor will have to become a lifelong learner. You have to keep learning because you have to help another uh, younger engineer. So you have to be learning the new techniques as time goes on. And then you, you will have the advantage of reverse mentoring. As I said before, you will learn a thing or two, especially nowadays the young engineers are very quick at picking things on the computers and the, the, the software and so on. So you can learn, still get uh, some form of reverse mentoring as a mentor. Last one is by uh, being a mentor, you will rec rec receive recognition for the skills and experience. So generally, the fact that you have been chosen as a mentor alone suggests that you are uh, an expert in, you are a better engineer or you are a senior engineer and you are a person who can impart some of your knowledge to a younger person. So it's a recognition from within your company or the organization. So what are the benefits for the profession or the organization? It will help to pass on the institutional knowledge and organizational culture to the members of the organization. So that way, by doing so, you can influence colleagues to become more well-rounded engineers. So the moment you have crude performance as well as knowledgeable individuals who are more um, cognizant of the rules and regulations, ethics and so on, you have a better group of engineers working for your uh, company. And also, uh, the, the organization will model professionalism and ethical code of conduct. Now, this is something that's very important uh, when everybody in the company or the organization uh, lives up to the ethical code of conduct. The company itself is, um, will become reputed as a, as a company that um, abides by the ethical code and also it's good for the country. <laughs> the society in the involved organization uh, abide to, to abide by the fiscal code of conduct. Now, in New Zealand, the code of ethical conduct has eight main points which are further elaborated in the code. But let me just go them uh, go through them quite quickly. Number one is to have to protect people's health and safety. You have to be considerate of the environment. And you have to report adverse consequences if there are going to be any, and then act competently. You can't do things that you are not competent enough to do. And behave appropriately. This includes a lot, um, not just uh, uh, the engineering side of things, a lot of ethical stuff as well. And warn about uh, ignoring advice and maintain confidentiality. And also, if there are any breaches, you have to report uh, those significant ones. So these are further elaborated in the Code of Ethical, ethical Conduct. And uh, it is very important for the mentor to show it to the mentee. And by having that mentor-mentee relationship, everybody who goes through the program will be aware of this. And that's the benefit for the organization and for the country. Now, let's see what the mentee has to do. Mentee has to decide the expectations of the partnership. What do you expect from the mentor mentee partnership as a mentee and then consider what are the career goals and objectives what are the goals that you have for the next three years for the next five years for the next 10 years and so on and then think about any known areas for development what do you lack what you need more training in what you need more uh, expertise in to, to reach the goal that you are after and then think about any current obstacles or opportunities okay? now in the meantime mentor also has to do a bit of thinking. Mentor has to decide the expectations of the partnership. What does he expect from the partnership, right? And then reflect on why you have chosen to be a mentor. Why would you become a mentor? Is it just for fun or is it, what, what is the purpose, right? So you have to really reflect on that. And then consider your own development needs and what you want to take away from the partnership. So sometimes you may not be, 100% uh, ready for the men mentorship. So you might have to have some, let's say, communication gaps that need to be filled, right? So 
You can ask for that training from the organization, for example, the institution of engineer here or the engineer in New Zealand over there. And think about your career, including key milestones and changes. So as the mentor, what are your plans? What are your, what are you, um, your plans for the next one year, 10 years, five years, 10 years, and so on. So all these things have to be considered by both the mentee and mentor before they jump into it or sign into a, a mentor-mentee relationship. The third topic that I'm going to discuss is the successful mentoring program. I'm going to take the example of Mentor Me for this. Uh, this is uh, uh, this was uh, tried first in 2018 as a pilot program, and it is a free mentoring program for members of Engineering New Zealand that connects experienced engineers with emerging professionals who are in their early stages of the career. So that's that's the what this that program that has been going on for nearly five years now. Now in that the meetings between the mentor and mentee has just happened at a mutually neutral place. It doesn't happen in the mentee's office nor at the mentor's office. So it has to be in a neutral place. And it has to be in a relaxing environment where both can be relaxed. And it can be either face to face or it can be online. Now there are so many ways of meeting up. If you don't, if you don't live in the same part of the country, for example, if one is living in Auckland and the other one is in Christchurch, but you are a good match, then you can do the um, mentoring or the meetings on the on the uh, online. And you have to, you can meet as frequently as needed, and that again is agreed upon by the mentee and the mentor. And as long as required by the agenda for the day, for that day. So sometimes you can get dragged on, but you, the mentor has to be quite generous with the time. When you will. So before I go further, I will get you to listen to two um, young and female engineers who benefited from this uh, mentor me program. Let's, uh, next, let's spend the next five minutes or so listening to um, Selena on your left and Sarah, on your right. Hello, everyone. My name is Selena, and I have been working as a civil engineer for three years. And in the past three years, I've been joining the mentoring program um, with Engineer New Zealand as a mentee. And today, I just want to share um, some of my experience as a mentee with Engineer New Zealand um, mentoring program and how my mentor actually has um, played a very important role in um, throughout the journey as an engineer. So um, the first um, question why I do mentoring. So I have joined various um, mentoring programs since I was at uni and continued um, becoming a mentee when I started working. So I personally find it uh, the mentoring program is a very um, good opportunity that you gain um, experience, advice, tips and tricks from um, senior professionals who have been through the journey before. And um, it also helps you shape and um, develop your personal and professional skills. And um, the experience with NGA New Zealand, um, I joined as soon as I heard about um, this exciting opportunity because I personally benefit a lot um, from having a mentor and um, it also helps you uh, overcome any work-related challenges and difficulties and help you um, through a smooth transition from school to work. Um, and the uh, couple of benefits or what I've gained from the mentoring program is um, versus personal growth, I would say, because um, throughout the journey, you've um, gained enough technical skills and also any um, work related experience and advice um, and not not just stopping there. Also other um, uh, soft skills such as like effective communications um and leadership skills and you also gained confidence throughout the uh, mentoring program because your mentor is supporting you and uh, encouraging you and so you will develop yourself and to work more confidently at work 
um, and also uh, I would say you develop a long term friendship with your mentors. So not just the mentorship um, by sharing your experience, your stories and gaining advice and help you actually develop that long term friendship. So you feel um, uh, fulfilled with uh, satisfaction and happiness. Um, and um, at last, I just want to say a couple of things that um, advice for mentees who are looking for mentors. So when you're looking for mentors, it's very important that you find or you look for mentors who are supportive, um, approachable and who are willing to invest time on your personal growth. And um, also, uh, how often do you meet up with your mentors? Um, that depends on your availability and um, how often, like the frequencies of meetups. Um, uh, my, myself personally, I meet up with Atla, um per month. We're trying to, but the plan is um, quite flexible depending on the availability. But um, I just want to emphasize that the important part of it is to for mentees to be proactive so you have to set up goals for yourself and keep track on your goals and also checking in with your mentors um, regularly uh, where your progress is and um, what the outcome if you're needing any help or support uh, or you're needing a, a little bit longer time to um, achieve your goals and just to be proactive and um, approach your mentors and setting up plans and schedules to meet up and to check in on the progress. So uh, I really and highly recommend that you develop a, a mentoring program, a develop a mentoring relationship with your mentors and um, because you definitely um, learned a lot and helped you um, throughout the decision makings and uh, within your within the engineer within for your uh, career path within the engineering industry. So thank you very much for joining me um, for my journey as an engineer. So um, I hope these um, tips and tricks helps. So I hope that that was helpful to those young engineers who are looking to be uh, mentored. So let's listen to Sarah now. She. She has had uh, about seven years of experience now. She was one of the early mentees in, in the program. So let's listen to her. Hi everyone, my name's Sarah. Um, I've been working in the engineering industry for the past six to seven years. I started out as a structure engineer and then I changed over to fire engineering, which I currently am practicing in. Um, during the earlier stages of my career, I joined Engineering New Zealand Mentorship Program. And I am really, really pleased I did because I felt like I needed someone outside of my corporate business um, that I could speak to about what I wanted to achieve. Um, even if that meant, you know, I was looking at switching my careers from structural to fire and, and potentially changing a job with that. So having someone outside um, that was independent is really helpful and um, for me also working in quite a male dominated industry hoping less so now um, I found it really really nice to have uh, another female colleague that I could speak to um, someone yeah someone outside outside the company um, you can just open up to and trust and yeah help point you in the right direction when there's something that you're like oh, I'm not sure who I want to speak to about this. Um, yeah, I, I found myself finding these and these meetings um, where we were caught up with our mentor um, really helpful. It kind of gave me a bit of a reset on the direction that I wanted to go and, and the lists of things that I wanted to achieve. Um, for me, it was, yeah, whether I wanted to change into fire engineering, how do I want to get chartered? When do I want to get chartered? Um, what are the steps that I need to take to, to achieve that? And yeah, it was, it was really, really nice to hear from someone, even if it's outside of your industry. Um, yeah, there's, there's always the business side of things. You can get the technical help you need from your colleagues, um, from your managers at work, but learning on how to navigate your career and the path that you wanted to take um, I found super helpful to get that guidance from someone outside of your company um, because it's more about what you want to achieve. Um, 
the advice that I'd give if you are wanting to go down the mentorship program is absolutely do it. Um, it's so helpful and it is, you will get out what you want, want to get out of it. So it does require you to put in the effort, um, really take the step ahead and, and plan these meetings, have things that you want to achieve um, and make sure that you, you talk about the things that you want to. Um, yeah, I, I found it really helpful and I would highly recommend it. So I would like to actually uh, acknowledge the help from uh, Selena and Sarah for their contribution to this one. Now, I know it's uh, Sarah particularly has a very heavy accent, so I will uh, translate uh, to our English a little bit. I just typed the summary of their uh, talks just to give you an outlining. So, uh, Selena says the mentoring program was a good opportunity for her and she learned tips and tricks from the seniors. A senior, I mean, I was uh, her mentor for, I'm still continuing uh, the mentorship with her. And it, it helped her to develop personal and professional skills and overcome those related challenges and allowed her to have a smooth transition from academic work to industry. And it also helped in, it, uh, helped in the personal growth and she developed soft skills like effective communications and leadership skills and she gained more confidence and really that, that's very very true and she also established a long-term friendship with the mentee and she says that when you look when you look for a mentor uh, look for someone who is supportive and approachable and ready to invest time in you right so those are the three things that she wants you to take away and she also says do these things be proactive Check with the mentor from time to time and also seek support whenever you need. And Sarah says that um, the mentoring program was um, good because the mentor was from outside the industry. She was a structural engineer and I was in the water and wastewater engineering. And uh, because of that, she was, uh, get, was able to get the independent view of some of the things that was happening with her at the industry. And also, it's a very male-dominated industry, and so it was good for her to have a female as a mentee, sorry, mentor, and then so she could open up and trust the mentor and uh, someone who was going to point her in the right direction because she was trying to move um, from uh, change her career path at that time. So it, she says that it helped in um, that the meetings were helpful. And she got the. Uh, she decided on the direction to go. Of course, the mentor can't uh, do everything. The mentee has to make the decisions. All you are doing is leading them in the right direction and supporting them in wherever, whatever way you can. So uh, she changed her career path from structural engineering to fire engineering. She uh, she actually did a degree in fire engineering subsequent to that, and uh, she also learned uh, how and when to get chartered and what steps to take to achieve that goal and also um, guidance in, uh, she got guidance in navigating the career. So the, she, the advice that she gives to mentees, the future mentees, the prospective mentees, is absolutely do it, she said, because it, it's a good thing, um, it, it was good for her, and it's helpful, and she asked you to put in the effort and plan the meeting, meeting and that she highly recommends. Okay, so... Those are the experience of two mentees, female mentees actually, female engineers who progress in their career um, with the use of the uh, help of a mentor. Right, let's move to the next point, which is the, which are the expectations from the mentee and the mentor. Okay, now what are the expectations from a mentor? The mentor has to believe in the mentee, right? That's the starting point. You have to believe in the mentee and then you have to be authentic. You can't be fair. You have to be the real you, right? And then you have to be able to see the potential and weaknesses in, that the mentee can't see. So mentees sometimes when they look inward, they don't see their own weaknesses. They can't see their potential. So you are there to help them to draw out those weaknesses and the potential. So you have to be quite um, insightful. And you have to give honest feedback. So I will tell you later that honest feedback has to be taken by the mentee in the right spirit as well. I'll talk about that later. And then you have to be empathetic. Empathetic is to be able to see someone's grief or someone's position or someone's um, 
situation with your own eyes, right? So you're trying to make things more easier for another person because you are considering their situation. Now let's do a small uh, test. test. It's called empathetic test or the e-test. Okay, this is something that I find interesting. So I would like you to take your uh, hand, right hand, if you are uh, your your uh, prominent hand, right, and tap it five times. Tap your fingers five times after me, and then write E with your index finger on your forehead. Okay, so let's go. One, two, three, four, five, and write E on your forehead. The letter E, capital E, on your forehead with this index finger. On your forehead, here. Write the letter E. Right. Right. Okay. Now, when you wrote the E, did you write it so that you will see it as E or the someone in front of you see it as E? How did you write it? You wrote it so that you can read it as E, right? So, they say, being empathetic is to be able to see see things from the other person's perspective, right? So the experiment, the, the apparently, I, I haven't read too much of it, but the research that has been done in a university in the USA, it says the higher you go in a career, the more senior you are, you are less empathetic to your other colleagues, right? So that's what they say. I, mean, I think it's quite interesting, but that's the e test, okay? So decide for yourself whether you are empathetic or not, okay? So let's move to the next one. The, the expectation from a mentor, you don't rescue, but assist the mentee to find answers. As I told you before, you are not the superman. Don't rescue, but assist the mentee to find answers. Because you might help him or her in this organization, but what happens if he or she faces a different challenge in the next company, right? So you, what you have to do is to empower them to... Um, the inculcate the skills that they need to uh, negotiate any difficulty in the future in a different company or a different environment. So don't be the don't be the rescuer. Then humility, being honest about own weaknesses and failings. Now, young engineers really appreciate when you're honest and tell them about your past and tell that okay, I I should have done this differently, but this is how I did it. Right. So being that being that. That honesty and being, being humble about it, accepting the errors that you have done and telling them the real story, they really appreciate that. Okay? So that humility is very important on the part of the mentor. Uh, expectation from the mentee, that's a lot. The young engineers, you have to be the driver of the relationship. I think I told you this before. The mentor, mentee is the person who drives the whole thing. Right? Now, you have to set the explicit goals. You can't be say, ah, I want to be a project manager five years down the line. No, it has to be specific goals, right? I will list out some here. And also priorities. What is the more priority? What takes more priority? Which one? What of the goals are, are taking more priority over the other? Timeline and the agenda. So the mentee has to take over the, um, take over the uh, organizing of that. What did I do? They probably picked up the pencil. Go there, go there, go there, go there. Right. Okay. Now, the explicit goals that I'm talking about, hmm. right. It, the explicit goals may be to learn new skills, map out a career path, to say, okay, five years down the line, this is I want to be, kind of thing. Grow your professional network. Do you have to have more colleagues in what kind of parts of the industry? Learn about the engineering industry. That may be one of the goals. And solve complex problems. You, you might be wanting to be a very expert in the design engineering, for example. And develop a reputation as a technical leader and advise or a guide for others. So the technical leadership is a very um, sought after position because that way, you're, you are using everything that you learned in the university, for example, the mathematics and so on, and apply it to a very specific area, design of edges or hydraulic modeling or whatever, right? So you can be a technical leader. And learn soft skills such as communication and interpreta interpretation. Um, move this further up. Um, work ethic, teamwork, and management and time management. So these are all soft skills. They are not, you know, there's no hard and fast rules and theories and you learn them 
uh, as soft skill. Okay, now uh, expectation from the mentee are these. As I said time and time again, the mentee has to be the driver of the relationship. So that's the, the explicit goals, priorities, and timelines and agenda. The mentee also has to be a good listener and able to reflect. So between meetings, the mentee has to re really reflect on what has happened in the last meeting and has to be non-judgmental. Non-judgmental is to not to say yes or no right away, and good or bad right away, but to uh, think about it and also be open to constructive feedback and comment. And has to be trustworthy. Has to be trustworthy. The mentee has to be trustworthy, and he or she shouldn't be going along telling everything that the mentor told you to do or not to do. Okay, and commitment to meetings and timelines. This is one of the very important ones. This is something that I actually mm -hmm. realize. There's nothing that puts off a mentor uh, than uh, not not committed to the meetings and the timeline. Right? It can be quite frustrating. So when you become a mentor, you build uh, leadership skills and you will begin to re-examine your own practice and attitudes and values. Am I doing this right kind of thing? So it, it actually makes you uh, look at introspectively as well. Chukar 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 Someone is talking aloud there. So increase the confidence. And learn from the mentee's experience and knowledge. So that gives the mentor an opportunity to learn from the mentee's experience and knowledge. And in New Zealand, when you uh, become a mentor, it, you earn CPD hours as well, right? So you can count it on the CPD hours of your professional um, um, training. So this is one of one uh, comment that a past mentor has made. I found it so rewarding to coach and encourage young engineers. Learning goes both ways. We both got so much from Mentor Me. So he's praising the program because the mentor has actually got a lot from the program. So becoming a mentor, on the other hand, will help to increase the confidence and self-awareness. So you begin to uh, know more about yourself, things that you haven't actually looked inwardly for a long time. And it helps you to progress the mentee's career and increase the work satisfaction, you feel that you are doing more and um, and you are getting more satisfaction out of the job that you are doing between nine to five or whatever. And then it excels the next mentee's network because now you know all the connections of the mentor as well, which are at a different, who are at a different level sometimes, right? And work through challenges, which will help you to work through the challenging uh, situations that come your way in the um, the, in your profession. So this is a this is something that a past mentee of the mentor mentor me program has told. I can't thank my mentor. Sorry, I can't thank my mentor enough. With their guidance, I identified gaps in my skills, and then I talked to my manager. Now I have a plan to address these gaps. Really beneficial experience. So your manager may not give you the opportunities because you you never know that you had that gap. So the mentor helps you. Then you tell him this is the situation I am in. The mentor will help you to identify that gap, and then you can go to the talk to your manager and find how you can fill that gap. So maybe attending a training course, or maybe attending a seminar, or whatever. Okay. So the the mentee is quite um, appreciative of the experience that he or she had. The last part, I think we are put on time. Um, the last one, I want to show you the essential documentation for implementing a successful mentoring program. Now, all this documentation is on the internet as far as the mentoring me program in New Zealand goes. So you can freely access them and you can model it to uh, match your situation here in Sri Lanka uh, for the institution of engineers and your institute organization. So this program has three stages. Getting started where the mentoring agreement is um, time between the mentor and mentee, and the mentee expectations, development plan, and client plan, and the mentor expectations are uh, um, really clarified and uh, explained and filled in, in, in the form of templates. And then the next stage in the tracking project, and the tracking progress, uh, to, to track the progress, we have uh, meeting reflections and 
perceiving the partnership, how the, how the partnership is going on. And then finally, to wrap up, we have uh, celebrate success. So if the, if the uh, mentor, no, it's normally it runs for nine months from April to December, but there are mentor mentor relations that have gone much longer, right? Much longer than nine months. For example, me and uh, um, Selena, we are now into the second year. So it uh, really doesn't matter. As long as you are happy with continuing the mentorship, you can do that. Now, the code of, there's a code of conduct. Even for the mentorship program, there's a code of conduct, and it has 10 points. I will just quickly, uh, I won't read the whole thing. It will be very boring. The first one is to uh, tell what the mentee's role is. Mentee's role is to drive the partnership. Secondly, the mentor, what does the mentor do? The mentor will encourage and empower the mentee to drive the partnership. Thirdly, the mentee and the mentor will agree on how they want the partnership to work. Fourthly, the mentee and the mentor will be open and truthful with each other. Five, the mentor and mentee will share the responsibility. So it's not one person's responsibility. It has to be the joint responsibility of the both the mentor and mentee. Uh, the mentoring partnership will not be exploitative. For example, the mentor can't get mentee to do his, you know, some of the designs, for example. It shouldn't be exploitative. It is a very respectful relationship between the mentor and the mentee. Just by being the senior engineer, you don't have the control over the mentee. Remember that. Okay? Number seven, the mentor will not work beyond their capability. Now, if I don't have design skills, I will not try to uh, coach or give advice on my, on, to, the, to my mentee on design uh, situation, right? So you should never try to go beyond your capability. Number eight, the confidentiality of the mentee will always be respected. That nothing should be uh, taken out or tell, uh, told to anybody without the permission. Now, the, for example, the video that I made with the full permission of the mentor, mentee, right? So th those are things that you have to really re respectful of your mentee. Number nine, the mentor and the mentee have a responsibility to inform the. So from re regularly, from time to time, we have to uh, inform the um, the in New Zealand, their BR, and when you close down the uh, um, the relationship again, you will tell them where you are and how it, how it all ended. The mentor and the mentee share the responsibility to report any code of conduct violation. So this is the responsibility of. So if, if any of the Codes here are violated by either party. It is the responsibility of the parties to report it to the engineering unit. Now, see, all these are clearly laid out. I will just show you the picture of it. These are clearly laid out the, what to expect, what, how, what are the contents of the meeting guide, the tracking process, and how to wrap the things up. So, all this is very clearly uh, outlined in the, um, in the website. The mentor view this right. Have a when you are free, have a look and be serious about developing a mentorship program. Now I remember this request was made of me two years ago at the time when I think Prostrata Prostri Ratna was here. And I think there was an informal uh, mentorship program, but nothing was formalized I think. Okay. Right. Next. Uh, I'll show you I'll show you a few um, um, forms. Now, this is the mentee expectation. So these forms are ready, all, all, uh, available on the net. I'll just show you an empty form, what the mentee expectations are. For example, the mentee has to fill this form and submit it to the Engineering New Zealand. So Engineering New Zealand is the organization that does the matching. So it takes the forms from the mentee, takes the forms from the mentors, and see where the strengths and weaknesses are and matches them, and then ask them to meet up and so this all happens online. There are no physical meetings until the mentor and the mentee meet together in their first meeting. So there are no physical meetings until all, all this documentation happens before the matching. Okay. So this mentee expectation, let's have a look. I expect my role in the mentoring partnership to be you have to fill it up and then uh, the development needs so you can tick off whatever you want and the progress I would like to make with each and the type of support I will include from the mentor. And then finally, um, I want my mentor. So this is the immediate requirement. I want my mentor and I to begin by discussing the following. So this, is, this sets out the first meeting, what you want to discuss in the first meeting. After that, you take away from there and you leave it to the mentor and mentee to deal with it. 
finally, the skills and qualities, I'm looking for the mentor. So I'll show you one that has been filled by someone. And as you can see, the development needs doesn't have to be all of them. So that particular uh, young engineer may have had problems in these uh, areas. So these are the areas that that person wants to make progress in. So you pick the areas that you want and then be descriptive. Uh, for example, this person, career planning, professional skills, personal empowerment, support for chartership are the ones that that person is looking for. The type of support that read uh, out of the eight, seven, uh, the, this person has, this engineer has six, six, as you can see. Then the first topic that that mentee wants to discuss with the mentor are the how to get chartered, the next step in getting chartered, and how to get promoted, right? And then what that person is expecting from the mentor are the provide both motivational and development feedback, enthusiastic in sharing experience and expertise, finally able to network and find resources for the mentee. So that might be, those are the areas that she wants. Now the mentor expectation. So as if, I, if you are the mentor, this is what you will fill and give it to the engineering New Zealand. The reasons I want to be the mentor. These are the reasons. And then I, I expect my role in the engineering partnership to be this. And then the development needs. The mentor also might have development needs, right? Sometimes in the career planning or professional skills or whatever. And then what are the professional development needs? Mentoring uh, will, uh, will help me with up. So, so this is something another um, mentor has built. Uh, I'm just showing you an example how explicit or how um, if you can be basically the reasons I want to be the member are to share knowledge and experience to support a guide junior female engineers who achieve goals and thrive in a male dominated industry to be able to be in touch with young engineers and be aware of their aspirations. So this is an example. Just have a look at it. I will read it. So you can see that there are um, development needs for this mentor as well. And finally, the criteria, progress between meetings and so on. Okay, So these are the standard forms. And after that, the mentor matching form. So the mentor matching form is also a form that both, if you are a mentor, you will click the mentor box here. If you are the mentee, you will click, the, this, click this box and then fill this form with your details. So this is what um, the mentor matching form would look like. And this is what the uh, officials in the uh, institution will be looking at when they try to match you with a uh, mentee. So what is your current role and aspiration? Uh, this, the, the reason why they ask this is to connect you with someone who aligns with your own career path and essay. So if, if, you are, if the mentor is looking for something and if the mentee is also looking for the same thing, then they, it's easier for them to uh, uh, find the right uh, partnership. What are your greater strengths? If you give, if you are strong in, let's say, project management, you'll be matched with someone who is looking to improve in project management. So that's where they are using this information to match you with the right person. What areas would you like to develop in? So that's another one. What's the main thing you want to get out of this mentorship, right? So these are the questions. What are the preferred channels of communication? Some people live in remotely in New Zealand, for example, they are very rural areas and they may not have uh, access, you know, there may not be too many young engineers around. So you might have to uh, mentor someone who is far away. So for them, it will be the channels of communication might be different. So how do you describe the author? Now here you can be wired because you can, you can tell about your sports, whether they like cricket, whether you like netball, whether you like horse racing or whatever, because this helps you to uh, to break to this is an icebreaker. So for the first conversation, for example, you would be getting jumping into engineering. So there if there are some commonalities, then you can break the ice with that particular topic and then you can be more uh, formal. Okay. So these are things that they ask for so that you will this is not one of the priorities, though, but it's good to know of your um, the, the interest of the mentor and the mentee. And this is the question they ask. In three years' time, what would you like to be doing? Right? So this is this is the um, long-term plan of the mentor and the mentee. So this is the other. Um, these are the other questions on that form. What are your top passions? What 
for example what makes you get up in the morning say that's you what 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 really uh, makes you work what are the challenges you are experiencing describe your ideal mentor or mentee what who is your ideal mentor if you are a mentor then how what, what is your ideal mentee and what does the mentorship mean to you as the mentor or the mentee so these are these forms are quite useful and you'll be able to see them in the on the website and you can prepare your, your, your own ones to match the situation that you are in Okay, I think that with that, I'll just uh, show you the mentoring agreement where both the uh, mentor and the mentee sign at the end of the matching. So we just uh, sign at the bottom of the sheet where we vouch to respect the time commitment, we adhere to the engineering code of ethics, we agree to meet, say, once in six months, sorry, once in six weeks, or once every Monday of the month, or something like that. And the discussion and to keep the discussion confidential and follow through on the agreed uh, action. And we will be um, open to giving and receiving feedback and we'll review the agreement every few months so that uh, we can decide whether we want to continue or to uh, end the relationship and so on. So this is a mentoring agreement and you sign it at the bottom, both by the mentor and the mentee. And then you develop the development plan in the end. So you have the head of goal when you started, and then what were the objectives and challenges that were overcome, the actions that are needed to be taken to achieve them, measures of success, and when did you complete it, and what was the outcome. So you could have a few of those different development goals, and each development goal will have uh, these um, fact, the, the hub sections for that particular development goal. So there, I think, is the end of the presentation where you will um, be able to, this is the uh, website where you can get uh, more information if you are interested. And then um, you can form your own uh, set of documentation to be appropriate for your situation. And uh, it will be very useful. It will be very useful because it will develop a uniform uh, set of engineers who are aware of the culture, the ethics, and also it will help the mentees or the young engineers to uh, reach their career goals much faster, uh, easier, and also with less um, um, uh, battles, you know. So I'd like to thank you, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? Sorry, I don't. Oh, there are questions. Okay. So that's a question. As I am in my mid career, young engineer often approach me as a mentor, possibly due to my friendly demeanor, regardless of gender. However, I have reached a point where I feel the need for a mentor with more experience than me. How can I address this if I sense the shortage of female mentors in my entry? industry whom I'm comfortable approaching. Now, actually, um, the mentorship doesn't have to be uh, for a female engineer. It doesn't have to be a female engineer. And for a male engineer, it doesn't have to be a male engineer. I mean, I have seen examples where the opposite you know, sexes have worked really well. However, for your situation, uh, Zara, book, yeah. Um, now uh, you you see you see that your young engineers often approach me as a mentor, possibly due to my friendly method. Now, as I said before, as I said before, um, nobody knows everything, and you don't have to know everything in order to be the be a mentor. So how can I address this? So that's the way to address. Just tell, tell yourself that you don't have to know everything to be uh, to be a mentor. A sense of shortage of female engineers now female mentors that that's a problem throughout the world i think uh, there are less female engineers less male engineers so um, don't wait until you find a female engineer uh, for your mentor start if you can uh, and it, it's better if there is a mentorship program is formally uh, addressed because sometimes uh, it 
may not work properly because uh, there is no um, sort of observer or somebody to report back to and uh, the, the mentorship relationship may not end up the way that you intended to. So I guess there should be able to mute all participants. Ah, I think that's true. That should have been done. I heard some interesting remarks while doing this. So is that the only question? Yeah. That's the only question online, but from the floor, are there any questions? Yes. Thank you. Sorry? <laughs> I, did, I didn't understand. Sorry. I, all? The whole, the whole country needs a mentoring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, the whole country needs a mentoring system. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yeah. 
So, I mean, as you can uh, see, there are a lot of development needs. Now, if you look at talk to the engineer, for example, there are a lot of communication, there are a lot of soft skills that are missing from the graduates. So, once they are in the industry, it's very important to, you know, bridge those gaps and become a uniform lot. I mean, there may be some engineers who are very good at these soft skills, but there's, there'll be another, say, quite a lot who aren't. So, you can make the whole community more uniform and with, the, with similar skills. And uh, that will enrich the whole organization. And so the engineering institute of engineers can be proud about the, you know, engineers. Yeah. So I think you have to start somewhere. And the forms can be, you know, uh, yeah, more, more, yeah, accordingly. And yeah, I'm. I'm of course, uh, you know, that's, uh, yeah. 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 And I hope IESL will start a program, mentee, uh, mentor mentee program, even within our university. So that's what that was I'm saying. So, uh, yes, I, I, I think it is it is possible, and it's timely that I mean, that because it is required every every day. Yeah. Time. Yes. But this is uh, the right uh, time. Uh, right time. Uh, yeah. Could be. Yes. And also, uh, I think uh, fine because the finance financial situation is not very good in the country. There is a bit of downtime for most of the engineers. So this is the time that they can uh, invest in uh, development as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let me know how I can. Is there another question? Uh, there are two raised hands, iPhone and Jahar Ismail. Can you type in your question or do you want to speak up? Your mic is mute, so can you type in? Thank you, Nishanti. Thank you very much. So, iPhone and Jennifer Ismail, are you it by mistake that you have raised your hand or do you have a question? You have two options, unmute your phone and then ask me or try, type it on the, to see. Okay, uh, I think they are not asking questions. So if you have, uh, the, what about the audience? Do you have any other questions or anything else? Now, uh, although you may not have had a formal mentorship, I'm sure all of us have had some form of a mentor in our life up to now, right? Your teacher or your cricket coach or whoever might have had a mentor role, mentoring role, and they are responsible for who you are today, right? So it may not have been very formally arranged one, but I'm sure most of us can attribute our successes to some, some mentor that influenced us in the past. Anything else? Ah, oh, yes. Yes, Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
implemented. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, you are a leader in the in the technical side of things, but there are lots of soft skills and ethical conduct yeah. skills. Those are very important as to be um, shared with the with the Yeah. Technical, technical. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, beyond that, yes. Yeah. But it makes the engineer more fuller. It makes it be a more, more complete engineer, not just someone who can, you know, design a bridge. No, it's a more complete human being who is conscious of the environment, conscious of other people, conscious of ethics, conscious of, you know, how others feel and so on. So it's, it's a more well-rounded engineer. Right. I think I'll call it a bit. If that's all. No more questions, right? Well, I... I, I no, no, no. Anyway, I told them so. Another question? No. Prishan, thank you very much for the valuable session. I am positive that everyone got the benefit of it and to start this program in the near future. Well, Sanjeev here has undertaken to do something about it. So thank you, Christine, for your comment. Let's call it a day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. For uh, if you have any other questions, we can. Uh, I, I'll talk to you. If you are too shy, if your communication skills are not that strong, I'm happy to answer any questions in uh, later on after the talk. Yeah, thank you very much for your uh, uh, attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, somebody wants my email address, so I'll type it here. I'll type it here. I'll put my uh, home address, right? Not the... Or you can use my official address. So those are the two addresses that you can. Thank you, Dr. Akhela Fernandez, for sharing valuable insight on the topic of successful maintenance. On behalf of Women Engineers Forum of IESL, now I cordially invite Engineer Shriyani Abhirikrama, the chairperson of Women Engineers Forum, to present the token of appreciation to Dr. Akhela Fernandez as a gesture of our gratitude for her time and invaluable contribution to today's event. I would like to take this moment to invite Dr. Achela Fernando to the stage to receive the token of appreciation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being. Thank you, Dr. Achela Fernando and Madam Chairperson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's being uh, 
it brings me immense joy and privilege to deliver a vote of thanks on this occasion representing the women engineers forum and all the participants first and foremost i express my sincere thanks to our esteemed resource person dr achela fanet thank you madam for accepting our invitation and enlightening us with valuable insights today during your brief stay in sri lanka your lecture left a lasting impact and we are truly grateful for your support i would like to extend my gratitude to professor ranjit vishanayaka uh, for your comment for and for your presence and the your support during the entire session of awdabi i also extend heartfelt gratitude to the respected members of the advisory committee for their guidance and also a big thank you goes to all the participants both present here in person and those who joined me online your active and enthusiastic participation played a crucial role in making this program a resounding success your dedication to learning and sharing has made this event truly meaningful lastly our sincere thanks goes to the institution of engineers sri lanka Uh, and also to the engineer Pranay Jayalat for being present here, and to the technical staff of their of the IESL for their continuous support and in organizing this event. Their tireless efforts behind the scenes of uh, behind the scene ensured everything ran smoothly. In conclusion, I extend our sincere thanks to each and every one of your. of you for gracing us with your presence this evening we hope the knowledge and insight gained here will continue to resonate and your professional life with these words i conclude and have a pleasant evening ahead and also before leaving i invite you all to join us on stage for a group photograph thank you